Back in days of old, there was a legend told about a hero known as Galavan. Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. True love was never this ecstatic, nor as wildly acrobatic as he loved her to excess, thrice daily more or less, and she'd be screaming, I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, actress and singer Karen David to the show. Welcome, Karen. Oh, thank you so much, Tammy. I'm so excited to be, finally, we, we get to chat and talk about all things Galavan. <laughs> I know, I well, because I, I stuck with it through season one. I loved it. I loved it because I was, I was unsure. I think a lot of us were unsure what the pitch was going to be of Galavan on ABC. For people who have not seen it before, um, Karen, would you mind giving just a little introduction as to what in the world went on in season one? Because we're, we're just coming into season two. <laughs> oh God, how long have we got? Um, if you haven't watched Galavan uh, in season one, if you love Monty Python and the Princess Bride, you're going to love our show. We have so many legends behind this show um, from Disney Kings, Alan Menken and Glenn Slater, who created the wonderful music um, for our show. Alan Menken, as some of you may know, uh, wrote the music um, for Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, Pocahontas. Dan Fogelman, who's the creator of our show, he um, wrote Cars, Tangled, and Crazy Stupid Love. So we've got such a wonderful team behind this. And um, in season one, it starts off with Princess Isabella uh, and her family, the King and Queen of Valencia. They govern um, and run the uh, Kingdom of Valencia, which has now been overtaken by the evil King Richard and Madalena. Madalena used to be the former love of Galavant. So whilst that's going on, King Richard discovers Isabella hiding in Stella and basically blackmails her and tells her that she can get her kingdom back and save her parents from uh, an untimely death um, in exchange if she seeks out Galavant and brings him back and uh, relinquishes him to King Richard. So um, they, she embarks on this journey and, and, and meets Galavant and... It's a very, um, at first it's a very, <laughs> it's a unique duo, and then Sid comes along too, so it's the trio, the three of them that embark on this journey back to Valencia, and all that kicks off and happens between the three of them is quite funny and endearing, um, and they do eventually make their way back to Valencia. Of course, they are faced with many challenges, and season one ends on many cliffhangers, which I know the fans were freaking out, saying, no, no, we need to know the answers. So um, the fans have been so steadfast and so supportive. There's so much love for our show um, from the fans that we were just so happy that finally, after waiting for a year, that they could see what we've been up to. We're, we're not going to try to reveal any too many spoilers <laughs> about season two because we know some people are binge watching and trying to catch up. So she, we kind of end with uh, Isabella at the end of season one in a giant dollhouse, <laughs> and she's yes. uh, set to marry her cousin Harry. I'm kind of fascinated by the show's premise, and I was wondering how in the world did they explain it to you through the auditions, or did they not? even explain it at all oh well you know what my agent called me and said you know I've got a great script for you I'm not going to tell you anything it's self-explanatory you just need to read it but it's really good and I'm really excited about it so I said okay so he sent me the script and when I read the pilot I'll never forget I was like a little girl reading you know this wonderful storybook you know that your parents read to you when you're about to go to bed when you're a little girl and I I was so excited. You could see my eyes just getting bigger and bigger as I turned each page. It was so... I've never read anything like it. Um, It's not every day that you read scripts that are a medieval comedy musical. 
Um, when I first read about the description of Isabella, that was quite funny because Dan had written in his description that his dream girl to play Isabella was Jennifer Lawrence. So it was really funny. So I picked up the phone and I called my agent right away. And I said, um, have you read the script? He said, well, of course I have. I said, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I said, well, then you read the part of how Dan described Isabella. And he said, yeah. I said, well, the last time I looked in the mirror, I looked nothing like Jennifer Lawrence. And my agent just said, Karen, shut up and just go to the audition. In a way... I had no expectations. Not that I do when you go into costumes. You just want to give it your best um, and feel good about your your performance. So for me, that's what it's about. But this one, I really felt like the underdog in a good way, in a positive way, because I didn't feel any pressure because I thought, well, I look nothing like what they're looking for. So I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose and I'll just, whatever. I just kind of went in and I said, I'm just going to have fun with it. And... Um, Make a long story short, it just the next thing I know, I'm meeting Dan, and he took so much time to get to know me and and loved the fact about my background and 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 was intrigued by it all. And uh, the next thing I know, I'm testing for ABC. And during this whole journey, I kept thinking, I kept thinking, wow, I can't believe I've made it this far. And it's not because i'm I was being negative, but just surprised because I was so convinced that they were going to get either Jennifer Lawrence or someone like Jennifer Lawrence that looked like her. So um, it was such a pleasant surprise right into the end. And when I got the role, I was I was obviously so elated because it's a dream role to play a character like Isabella. Um, in season one, we see a very feisty Isabella, a very feisty, uh, you know, she is, she is apprehensive, very apprehensive because there's so much at stake uh, and it's all resting on her shoulders, you know, her kingdom's well-being, her, her parents lives are um are at risk and so there's a lot of stress on her shoulders but she she handles it the best way that she can and she's got such a big heart you you see that in in season one you know she's she will do anything for the love of her family um for the love of her people she's very much the people's princess and um it's funny because when I was doing research of the kind of princess that, you know, we all wanted Isabella to be, the creative team, and, and, and myself, you know, I was looking at, you know, Princess Diana. She was very much the people's princess, um, and she was a tortured soul, but um, had the biggest heart. And I wanted to take some of that and put that in Isabella. You know, she is, after all, just a not, in very many ways, which is so endearing. She is like any other girl her age, you know, who who loves her family, who would love to meet the love of her life, but at the very same time, very strong and, and forward-thinking. You know, she says in season two in the opening that you know, she's a feminist and, and believes in women's rights and equality. Um, and that's busy for you, which I'm so proud of that, that she is like that. But at the same time, you know, in season two, fans are going to see a very different Isabella and uh, that was showcased right early on in the second half of um, episode two in season two, where you see uh, a medieval Skype call go very wrong um, in the communications between her and Gallivant. And her whole world has been pulled apart from it. Um, you're going to see a very different side of Isabella. Um, you're going to see a very vulnerable side. You're going to see Isabella in tears. You can see Isabella frustrated and wanting to escape because all she wants to do is um, find her way back to Gallivant. Um, end of season one, this unlikely pairing where they would bicker at each other constantly throughout season one. And she calls him out. She tells it like it is. And he can rely, anyone can rely on Isabella to call things for what they are. And and that's what she does. And that's why he Gallivant grows to love Isabella. And, and she grows to love Gallivant for all his quirks and bravado. Um, you know, she knows that there is a good, kind-hearted person there who means well. And so to have them ripped apart at the end of season one was just so heartbreaking. And then you, you see all of season two is about them trying desperately to find their way back to each other. But they're faced with so many challenges. Their love story reflects the realities of what love is. What makes it so special is is that it doesn't go with the typical fairy tale love stories, you know, where it is a happily ever after. Sometimes it isn't. And there are ups and downs and twists and turns to every relationship. 
And we're seeing that now and, and between Gallivan and Isabella and the relationship is being tested so much throughout season two. So it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. And it's Alan Menken and Glenn Slater, and they they know music, and they know what they're doing because I can't stop humming the songs. So I'm going to guess that you can't either. (laughs) (laughs) No, they're so infectious. And the thing is, you know, the songs that I sing or just sing, it's everyone's songs. We get them in our head, and we're like humming people on the crew when we're filming the the music. It, It normally takes to do musical number one day to film. So everyone's got the song stuck in their heads the whole day, humming along, you know, different different tunes. And I think, you know, maybe the worst thing, maybe not the worst thing ever and Love is Strange. Those songs we're hearing from so many people and now World's Best Kiss in season two. A lot of people saying, Oh my gosh, we have to have these songs featured in our wedding because it just it just um represents the true realities of the journey of love. Uh, uh, and relationships and that means so much to all of us I mean I think it is really funny um, when you hear lyrics like you know love is 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 strange and sometimes kind of gross and it's gassy and like you know dirty underwear I I just it's so funny I I remember clearly growing up going to school and singing in choir and we would sing these Alan Menken songs like from Little Mermaid and think, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Never in a million years did I think that A, I'd be working with Alan Menken one day. And on top of that, the lyrics that I would be singing are those kinds of lyrics of gassy and dirty underwear. So um, it's, it's quite funny. <laughs> you guys have several special guest stars on the show. Weird Al, Ricky Gervais, John Stamos, you know, all these people are very funny and so talented. And is this the, your first time working with majority of them, oh, correct? Oh gosh, yes. I mean, it, for all of us, I mean, it was such, it, I cannot, I can't even like begin to express how excited when we were, all, all of us, when in season one, you know, we started hearing that so many celebrated actors who are legends in their own right absolutely loved the premise of our show and loved the scripts and wanted to be a part of our show. So it was just so wonderful, like that, you know, between their busy schedules that we were able to get them. So to have, you know, Ricky Gervais and with Al Yankovic, um, you know, uh, John Stamos and all that come on board, that was just such, and Hugh Bonneville of Downton Abbey, it was just such a dream. And then second season, we've got so, oh, it's just so much more talent coming in. It, we, we were lucky enough to get Hugh Bonneville and uh, with Al Yankovic back um, to do a guest star. But we also have, you know, some fantastic actors um, from England as well, um, Simon Callow. And then we also have um, Robert Lindsay, and he's so talented, and, and he's done so much. He's a highly celebrated actor in, in England, and he is so funny. So we, we're very lucky to have him. Sheridan Smith, who is a force to be reckoned with, brilliant actress, um, BAFTA award-winning, and to have her come on board too, which was just amazing. And Matt Lucas. Matt Lucas of Little Britain, um, and you've seen him in Bridesmaids. I mean, he's in the show too. So, you know, there's so many wonderful actors that have come on board. You know, Eddie Marzan as well from Ray Donovan. So, and Kylie, we just feel so lucky. Well, before we end our interview, I have three Disney themed questions I always ask my guests. I call them the Fab Three. So, we'll start mm-hmm. with the uh, Donald one, which is as a child, what Disney film was one of those films you had to watch over and over again? Oh, that was a tough one. So, for me, obviously, I loved Aladdin. A Princess Jasmine was my dream. <laughs> I just always wanted to be Princess Jasmine. So I watch Aladdin over and over again. And Pocahontas, again, I wanted to be Pocahontas as well. But I loved Cinderella so much. I loved it so much, and I would play that over and over again. So those are my top three. I love it. And our goofy question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Ooh, that's a good one. I think my BFF would have to be a tie between... Mulan, because she's a warrior girl, and I always loved her for that, for being that tough warrior girl, and um, Esmeralda. And finally, our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? (laughs) See, I'm all in government mode, so those are technically Disney songs, too. Um, I would say Reflection from Mulan comes to my mind. That's the first thing that came into my head. 
And you're paving the way, Karen. I'm just so excited for Isabel's character, and and I'm very excited to see uh, what's going to happen for season three because everybody was very, very happy to see that we got a season two of Galavant. So we'll see what happens with Isabella and her love Galavant uh, in season three because season two, unfortunately, has already ended, but we can all go back and binge watch. I know I'm going to, and and I want to encourage listeners to follow Karen on Facebook at Karen David and follow her on Twitter at Karen David. It was great to have you on the show, Karen, and we need to have you back for more talk on season three. I'm crossing my fingers. Yes, <laughs> yes, fingers crossed for season three. You know, all the support means so much to us. And, um, you know, that's, that's the best gift of all is when people watch a show and they get so excited and it just takes everyone away for like one hour where they can, you know, be silly and laugh and sing along and, and just find that you know, that childlike innocence that we all have inside of us. So that, that's the best gift of all. So the fans have done that for us and made, you know, season two possible. So let's see what happens. Um, and hopefully season three is not, not too far away. Far from the world's best kiss Still I can tell you this It was a kiss I won't And maybe that makes me all sugar and spice and everything nice, but Lord knows I much prefer that over rudeness and sarcasm and back spasms. Bit of a stretch. I trained in monologues, not poetry!